chat. So if you guys have any, oh, there's a little announcement there. So I'll go ahead and get started. And if there is any questions you have, you can always go and type it in the chat window. Or if you just, you know, you want to raise your hand, I'll try to keep an eye on the video portion of this. Although sometimes it doesn't let me because I'm sharing my screen as well. Um, so anyways, welcome to the Lean Six Sigma information session. I'm Tracy O'Rourke. I am one of the instructors for the Greenbelt program. And Jim, do you want to tell them a little bit about yourself and introduce yes. yourself? Yes, Jim Athan, I'll be uh, instructing the Green Belt Black Belt Combination class. Uh, I am a engineer by training. I did my graduate or graduate work at Georgia State in Atlanta, and I have been involved in Lean Six Sigma for 20 some odd years um, and worked with Tracy and Angela for some good period of time and looking forward to working with you. Yes. Angela, why don't you introduce yourself as well? Sure. So my name is Angela Miller. Uh, I've been with UC San Diego Extension for almost 10 years now. Before that, I was at San Diego State University in their um, process improvement programs and an alumni of UC San Diego. So I was really, really uh, excited to return to my alma mater. Uh, and this is my sole focus. I focus on hosting a Lean Six Sigma program. So I will help on all administrative aspects and ensuring um, that everyone has a great experience. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I can't believe it's already been 10 years. Have I known you for longer than 10 years now, Angela? Because you and I worked together at San Diego State for a while. Yep. Yep. I know. Amazing. That is crazy. Well, we want to make sure we answer all of your questions about the program. So again, if I'm going to share an agenda just so that you guys have an idea of, of what we're going to be covering today. And then, of course, if you have questions, please uh, shout them out or just get on, uh, type them in the chat window. So our agenda really for today is just what is Lean Six Sigma briefly? Uh, we're gonna give you an overview of the green belt or uh, options and the format. We've got lots of different offerings, which is kind of cool because it really just depends on your learning style and your learning method that you prefer. We have lots of options for you. And we're also gonna go over the, uh, the black belt overview and format. We're gonna share a, a, an example, just quick example of a green belt and a black belt project. Mm -hmm. And then just talk about the benefits of going with UC San Diego's programs and answer any additional questions that you may have if you haven't already asked them. Does anybody have any questions before we get started? Are you sure you're in the right place? <laughs> okay, good. Are you sure you're going to Atlanta? <laughs> I'm Salt Lake. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, just to cover a little bit about process improvement, you know, everybody always kind of says, well, what the heck is Lean Six Sigma? And I really like to back up a minute and <laughs> start with Everything we do is a process, everything, almost everything we do. We tying our shoes, baking a cake, going through the airport process. Even every time you go and get lunch, it's a process that you go through. So all products, all services are delivered by a process of some kind. Well, what happens when that process is not working well? What if it's not working as good as it could? What if it's causing a lot of pain for customers and for the employees that work in that process? How many of you can think of a painful process right now that you've experienced or that you've had to go through, or maybe you know the process is painful that at work? Um, if Rodia says TSA, yeah, that could be painful. I mean, I mean, literally that is really true, Rodia, because I mean, how far in advance do we have to show up at the airport before our flight leaves, right? That kind of just tells us, okay, we got to show up like two hours in advance to go through the process. We're all kind of accepting of it for the most part, but it tells us, you know, wow, I got to show up two hours early. Okay. And sometimes that's not enough time. So often when things aren't working optimally, what do we do then? What do we do to improve the processes? So, uh, so that's really what we're looking to do with process improvement. Unfortunately, processes can be really painful. How many of you feel like you've worked in a process that's designed like this, or you inherited a process that's like this? How would you feel working in a process that's designed like this? Like, how'd you like to sit at one of these knotted pipe corners and have to deal with this process every day? Ah, that would be awful. Jim, you've probably seen a lot of people that have had this. And Jesus is saying, yeah, I've been there. 
Yeah, it's painful. It can be really painful. And what's interesting is sometimes when we can't see the process, you know, it's invisible. We tend to, over time, the process can sometimes get knotted if we're not diligent about a clean process, really. And so that's really what we're trying to do is we want to improve the processes. And uh, yeah, Radia, thank you. Invisible knots, invisible knots. Like how scary is that? Um, and so that's really where process improvement comes in. It's when we really spend time working on the process instead of working in the process. So most of us are hired because we have skills in certain processes. You know, you work in accounting or IT or marketing or whatever it is that you do, your specialty. And that's why you're hired. However, what if the processes aren't working well? How do you, that's a different skill set very different than the skill set that we may be trained in or educated in. And so a different skill set is needed to work on processes with the people you work with, right? I think that's the other thing is sometimes what people want to improve the process, but they want to go at it alone. They don't want to involve anybody else because it seems easier, right? It's not, it's not easier. Process improvement really should be done with the people that work in the process together. So guess what? That means you have to have a coordinated effort to step out of the process to work on the process. And yeah, I agree with you. Sometimes we don't know who to involve with the team. I see that all the time. People forgetting to involve certain people, sometimes because they don't like them, which is not good. <laughs> Okay, so this is really where Lean Six Sigma comes in. And Lean Six Sigma is a method, it's a set of tools, it's a philosophy, it's an approach, an overarching approach, approach to saying, how do we make our processes better? And so um, Lean came from Toyota in the 40s, Six Sigma came from Motorola in the 80s. And you know what, what we're finding is both methods work really well and they both follow the scientific method of root cause analysis and combined, they actually have very common benefits in terms of maximizing customer value, minimizing waste, increasing speed, reducing variability. And so that's really why you, you see a lot of people bringing Lean and Six Sigma together and teaching it together. Um, are there any new methods? You know, it's interesting. I think um, it's evolving. So when you think about without getting into too much discussion, and Jim, if you want to add anything to this, is, you know, we've seen a lot of, of evolving of processes, even Demaic, which is came from Six Sigma, I believe it, it's an, you know, it's evolving from PDCA, and I love PDCA too, but um, it's just evolving, I think, and I, I don't think that's over. I think that it's continuing to evolve. A lot of people are doing Kata now, and um, you know, and that is also a way to get your brain to think about processes. What do you think, Jim? Is there any new methods? That's what the original question was. I am constantly learning new methods. I'm constantly being exposed to different uh, techniques. What I'm finding is that there's there's been a lot of variation around the idea of the scientific method, as you mentioned. You know, uh, what is the problem? What are the possible root causes? Test the root causes, implement a solution. And so people have taken that and they have modeled it and, and specialized it for their industry, their business, even, even just their part of the organization. Um, the other thing I've seen is there's a lot of speciality going on with sub techniques around addressing things like rapid changeover of a piece of equipment or rapid improvement of a process. And so there's a lot of acronyms that are out there, but they still fundamentally follow the, the scientific method. And mm -hmm. we use DMAIC, but there's a myriad. There's the 8D, there's the you know, plan, do, check, act. I mean, there's a, there's a myriad and there's a lot of new ones that are coming out, but they still fundamentally have that core of the scientific yeah. method. Yeah. Definitely, thank you, Jim. And what's important about that is really not jumping to solution, right? So it's saying, pause for a moment, really find out what the real problem is we're trying to solve, and then what's the true root causes of why that's happening. And that's really where the, that's what we're training people on is to hold on, don't jump to solution, don't just automate a bad process. Let's really think through what really the problem is with the process and solve it. Um, and so guess what? Lean and Six Sigma are pretty much mainstream now, regardless of what people call it. Some people call it OPEX. Some people call it continuous improvement, business process re-engineering. 
Um, there's so many names for Lean Six Sigma these days, but regardless of what it's called, um, it has benefits. It's basically a lot of organizations want to build armies of problem solvers because they realize that problems are getting more and more complicated. And guess what? Problem solvers need better tools and have to be better and better at this uh, process improvement stuff. <laughs> And so ultimately, these are the reasons why organizations are implementing Lean Six Sigma. It does improve efficiency with our processes. The idea is that you're reducing the cost of poor quality. If we have less mistakes, that means we fix less things and it's costing us less money. It also can improve customer experience. If we're getting less defects, absolutely, that is going to help the customer experience. And then finally, Lean Six Sigma does help strengthen the organization. And what do I mean by strengthen? Well, it helps achieve strategic goals more effectively. It helps create agile organizations and it helps grow employees into problem solvers and building those problem solving muscles. So, I mean, would you rather have an organization filled with problem solvers or, or people that don't know how to problem solve? <laughs> That's pretty no brainer, right? <laughs> so, okay, let's talk a little bit about these belt levels because Sometimes people know about them, sometimes people don't. I just like to quickly cover them. But ultimately, the concept of Lean Six Sigma, and they came, it came from the karate, from the, they stole the analogy of karate in terms of levels of skills indicate different colors. And so with Lean Six Sigma, you, you're easy, more easily able to karate chop through waste. <laughs> process improvement. Go ahead, Jim. I want to see you do that too. Karate chop through waste. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's the not idea originally in Motorola where that was introduced was that you would have people who are highly trained, they would become specialists. And so the idea of a black belt is you've gone through a series of belts where your, your, your skill level and your knowledge level have increased over time. So a black belt they considered was an expert in problem solving that they could literally deploy to different parts of the organization. Whereas mm -hmm. green belts typically were still working in their part of the organization. So that's kind of where that idea came from. Yeah, yeah, thank you for that. And so not every organization has all of these belts as Jim pointed out. Um, some people do want white belt. So they have like a one hour or two hour awareness training. And then some organizations have yellow, but the ideally is we're, we're seeing a lot of people start at green belt and then in order to go to black belt, often you typically want to, to have a green belt first um, is usually the case. In Jim's case, he's offering a combo class. You can sign up for the green belt and then just start, go right through and take the black belt. But yes, you're absolutely right. Green and black belts, this is just a description. Green belts are people that lead or collaborate with process improvement teams. They have a tactical understanding of the most common Lean Six Sigma tools. Um, and then black belts tend to go more cross-functional. Uh, they might have bigger projects they have to do. But I think the other thing about black belts is you, you're, the hope is that they're coaching others to get better too. They're coaching green belts and yellow belts, not just doing the projects. And so that's an important thing, especially if we wanted to help build problem solvers. Okay, let's see. Do we have any questions about Lean and Six Sigma? Um, if you do, just go ahead and put them in the chat window. I think we're going to move now to transitioning into specifically what the Green Belt program is about. And then we're going to have Jim talk a little bit about the Black Belt program as well. So this is uh, an eye chart, but this tells you what is covered in the Green Belt. So the whole course is organized by DMAIC, Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve, and Control, which is one of the methods, this particular method to make came from the Six Sigma side of the of the, the all the, the philosophy and the methods. And really, this is just giving you an, an, a high level overview of really what's the main question for each phase? What's the problem? And then it kind of talks about the different tools and charts that you're going to be using. Now, what's the problem is, you know, there's a lot of activity happening in there. So for example, what's the problem? And then you have to really understand current state. So you're building a map, you're walking the process, then building the map. And then you're really saying, okay, where in this process, what's going on in this process? And you're really, really trying to stick with current state. We tend to want to jump to solution even right when we're trying to understand current state. But the whole point of define is to build profound knowledge of current state. And that's really helping us identify what really is the problem. And often we sometimes identify root causes during our process walk, but we do, um, that's more an analyze. 
So this is just kind of covering the main question of each of the phases. So what's the problem? How bad is it? You gotta actually measure it. You gotta, cause sometimes we find out that the squeaky wheel is saying, oh, this is horrible, but we find out it's actually not that big of a deal. Um, and then we have analyze what are the root causes? That's really the crux of DMAIC because often if without DMAIC, people are skipping this step. As a matter of fact, most people go from define to improve. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even go measure, analyze. And so again, we're saying pause with this. Here's some of the things we're really looking to understand before we implement a root cause. Wouldn't it be nice to implement a solution that actually addresses the root cause? That's really what we're going after. And I can tell you that the, 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 the situation we have is how often have you guys seen solutions implemented that didn't solve the problem? Does that ever happen? Does it ever happen where you don't actually solve the problem? And yeah, usually that's what happens is, you know, I, I, I never get a shortage of head nods like this. Yes, this is happening because we aren't applying DMAIC. We're not really, we are so used to jumping to solution. We're even rewarded to jump to solutions. And so this is really saying, wait, don't jump to solution. Let's really actually make sure the solution's going to work. <laughs> you have anything to add to that, Jim? Well, you know, it's like having a garden and you have rabbits eating your, your, your lettuce and whatever, and you wear a special hat that says, stay away rabbits. And you go out in the yard and all the rabbits run away and you're like, it was my hat. And so you take your hat and you stick it on a post, you leave it out there, you go back in the house, the rabbits all come back and you discover it had nothing to do with my solution. It was because I showed up and watched. And that's the trick. We tend to jump to solutions, think we were effective, but in reality it's because we stopped and looked at the process and behaviors changed. How do we make that permanent? And that's really what Trace is talking about. How do we go through a methodology to make sure our solution is actually effective and not just us showing up with a funny hat on? Yeah. It could have been yeah. a badge or a necktie too, but I went for that. Yeah, Rodilla says whack-a-mole. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> that you know, like we're just trying to hit, we're trying to hit the mole. There's an actual game that you hit the mole. How sad is that? But anyway, but it's exact. I actually, I had a company that they would buy the game for people as a joke, like you're whack-a-mole. <laughs> that actually wasn't a good thing. But anyway, uh, so this is what we cover in Greenbelt. And regardless of format, regardless of the format, this is what we cover in Greenbelt. We really focus on being the students being able to understand how to improve your process. And the first part of that is how do you walk the process? How do you see the process? How do you map it? Who, who do you analyze it with? What did you discover? There's, you know, we really want you to get good at process analysis at the green belt level. We don't cover a lot of hypothesis testing in our green in this green belt course because we really believe that a lot of people you need to know and how to do process analysis. And then when we get to black belt, Jim hits you with the hypothesis testing, but he does it in a great way so that it's not scary. Right, Jim? Uh, more or less. He's, he doesn't like to scare his students. Okay, which is good. So here's the different formats that we have for green belt. Let's see here. Okay, so I don't know why it's coming up that way, but anyway, I'm just gonna open them all up. Oops. Okay, so you've got a lots of different formats here. So. Option one is there's a case study. There are no, it's fully online. This is the blue one on the left. Fully online, no live interaction with the instructor as opposed to like live sessions that, you know, they are gonna be online checking your discussion boards and checking homework, but they are, there are no live sessions. So this works really great if you are in a different country on a different time zone um, and you really wanna come and you get the training, but it's unrealistic for you to get up at 2 a.m. to come to the class. So that's great if that's what you're looking for. It's fully online. Then for option two, it is online with a project. So it's fully online as well. However, you have uh, three one-hour coaching sessions with an instructor and it's project-based. So you're actually doing a project. This is number two. You do a project and you meet with the instructor about the, the coaching portion of your project. So you get the support, but all of the online, all of the learning is online. Uh, you're going through the modules asynchronously independent, but you are meeting with an instructor to talk about your projects and you do have to do a presentation at the end of the session. 
The third option, live online with projects. So this is very, uh, what I would say, blended. So you do some work independently, but then you have three hour sessions with the instructor. So this is, um, you're meeting with the instructor and there is some material and exercises that you're doing with the instructor and the, and the people in the class virtually. And there's seven sessions. So you have an intro session and a presentation. And then there's, there's a session for each phase of DMAIC, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. So that is the, the live online. That's where you get to see me online uh, and, you're taught, and, and coaching, or you see Jim online when he's teaching the Green Belt as well. Um, and then we have live online with project. Is that the same one now? It is. So we, this was the, we were gonna do in-person. But this was in person. It's no longer in person. Bummer. <laughs> yeah, it was going to be a couple of portions in person, but new restrictions always being changed. Yeah, that was this week, as a matter of fact. So three Today, and four would you say the, are the same right now? <laughs> yeah. So three and four are the same right now, right, Angela? Yes, they are. Just different start dates about a month later. About a month later. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, so if you have questions about that, please answer. But again, we're giving you, it's the same material, but just different formats. You can have no touch <laughs> with, with an instructor and high touch with an instructor. So you have three options. Um, and the last option, there's two sessions that you can sign up for, one in September and one in October. Um, and again, so just to tell you a little bit more, the, the, the course, the Greenbelt course is about uh, 11 weeks. This is just gives you a, an idea of what's happening with the case study portion of it. And it's really a lot of exercises that you're doing and you turn them in. So here's kind of what you're covering. You can see that everything's organized by DMAIC, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. You also have discussion boards and you have some homework assignments. When you go to the project, and we, I really recommend if you can to do a project to select option two or option three with a project, because I feel like that's where I've seen students, this is where the learning happens. It's the application, it's the doing part. And if you have a job, if you're currently working and you can come up with an improvement project, sign up for the ones with the project. So this is a little longer, it's 11 weeks of training. You have six weeks to complete the project after that for a total of 17 weeks. So again, um, and then you can have coaching with the instructor, like I said, or that you can actually have classes with the instructor, but it's the same format. So, and you're basically handing in assignments. And the nice thing about these assignments are they're all project related assignments. So guess what? As you go through the course, you're completing your project. That's the whole idea is you actually are applying it as you're doing it. And then I get to see how you're doing with your charter and your data collection plan or your baseline data. And we kind of talk through the challenges you're having and you get to hear other and people in the class and what they're doing and some of the challenges they're running into and some of the successes they're running into. Um, so if you prefer that, that you, you know, if you prefer in person, like a lot of people do, you know, this is the one people are signing up for this one coming up, which is the live instructor. So this one, again, very similar, you're doing project work and you have seven live online instructor class sessions with the class. And we've gotten really good feedback on this format. People have said, I prefer in-person, but we don't have in-person. I didn't wanna wait anymore. And this was the best thing that could have happened outside of live instruction. So we really work hard to, to make make the, have some engagement, get the support, create dialogue and activity within these live sessions. And we're getting positive feedback because guess what? We continuously improve too. Okay, so um, here are the weeks. This is the live online, that's me. I'm taking a picture of my class with my phone right there. Um, and so these are basically the dates that it's gonna happen. Uh, starts on October 7th and it goes from one to four. So like I said, you have seven live instructor sessions and they're three hours in the afternoon. And then six weeks later, you're going to do a, you're going to come back and do a presentation. So that is, I know I'm talking fast, but I want to make sure I have time to cover any questions and, and see if Jim has, a, we want to get to Jim's part, portion as well. Um, and then for Jim, Jim, did you want to say anything about, about um, the projects for Black Belt? 
I'm going to touch on that in a second. Um, yeah, we've got just a slide or two that addresses that. So we'll, we'll okay. talk about that. Okay. And Tracy, can I yes. ask this just a, an important question that I know students always ask is if they're coming into the green belt, maybe they're in transition or they don't have a project to work on. Is there a preference in format that you would recommend if someone wants to team up with another student on a project? Yeah, so um, ideally you probably want to do the live instructor uh, as well with the three hour sessions. Um, so we can place people with another project um, if they don't have a project of their own. We actually do really encourage people to try to find their own projects, but there are situations, one or two, sometimes people in class where they don't have a project and we have paired them. Um, you know, and those usually work pretty well in terms of learning. Um, and uh, so if, if that's the case and you feel like, gosh, I don't have a project, you can either take the no project option, which is option one, or you can uh, take option four with the hope that you're going to um, join another project team. And, and that means that you're going to, you know, you're going to be in an environment where you're going to learn something, right? You're going to learn something about somebody's project, your goal, you know, you'll be attending all of the, the sessions, all of the meetings for that project team and everything like that. So uh, you want, you, there's got to be some flexibility there as well. Okay. Um, so, uh, so again, this has changed. I mean, literally just this week, right? Angela, is this saying in person, but it's it's live instruction is really what we're doing. Yep, changed yesterday. <laughs> yeah, changed yesterday. <laughs> uh, can you? So Keith says, can you handpick processes from your project and work on that? Absolutely, Keith. That is preferred. And what we do is we we try to vet them as as much as as we can. We really want you to be successful in this class. So we. Um, you know, high attention on what projects are being picked. And, you know, I really look for red flags. And the reason why I'm looking for red flags is because I want people to be successful. Um, so there's sometimes a couple of red flags that I see and I'm like, this is what I'm worried about with your project. And if they can address that, great, or, or they end up picking another project. So, um, so you may have an idea when you come in and then you decide, okay, I'm learning a little bit more about what makes a really good to make project. And people change their projects all the time early on. Even we even have some people change them sort of three three classes in. That's not ideal, but it does happen because that's life. Okay. Yeah. Um, what involvement do you recommend with your with your work leadership? I the most important thing is they know you're in the class and they're going to give you time to attend the class number one and and give you time to work on the project number two. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes let's face it, sometimes leaders say, yeah, 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 I want you to do it. And then they're like, but I need you here. <laughs> So as long as you have that support, that's what's going to be really important. Okay, so I'm going to hand it over to Jim to talk about black belt options. Awesome. And so uh, as we go through, and I'll, great, I'm, sitting, I'm clicking my mouse to try to advance the slide. <laughs> <It's good stuff. laughs> um, as we go through, we're gonna, we, have a, we have a combined session where we're going to assume that you do you have not been green belt trained, right? And so we're going to start with the green belt training, and it's going to cover the first five weeks. Um, the total session is 11 weeks long, and so they're, they're, as a result, green belt training is not a prerequisite. We will actually cover the green belt material in the class. The first five weeks are the green belt training. Now, it's an asynchronous class, so we will have about four hours of online lecture, or excuse me, live lecture, and then there's about three to four hours of uh, videoed lecture as well as exercises. So it's a fairly intense class. There's a lot of material that we're going to cover. There, the secondary part of that is if you have been green belt trained, then you can drop in on week six, almost parachute in, if you will, with the knowledge that you've already gained as green belt, and then we will cover the advanced topics in black belt. So what will happen is if you take the black belt, if you take this course from the beginning, as the benefit for the black belt, who's, who's taken the entire course, is they're going to see the material, some of the material in the first five weeks. And then when we do the second, uh, this, the second half, if you will, the, the next six weeks, they'll see some of that material again, but in much more detail. And so if you, and if you just come in, it, we're assuming that you've already been green belt trained, you've already done some effort around that. And then we're going to dive into the deeper subjects, right? And so next, if you would, um, the, the idea here is anybody interested in from any industry, right? Because as Tracy talked about in the beginning, this is all about processes. And that every time I see that graphic she put up with the 
with the pipe coming in, all the twisty turning. I'm an engineer by training, right? So I'm looking at that going, that's one inch pipe and I'm calculating the pressure flow and you should be getting out 40 gallons a minute and you're getting out one gallon a minute and you look, why? Well, it's all the twisty turning broken process. And we see that in real processes all the time. So anybody interested from any industry who wants to improve their process with a structured methodology, there is no prerequisite for this class. The biggest thing is a willingness to learn and a good attitude, right? You can teach skills, but you can't teach attitude. That's a, that's a life thing that's hard to get to. So there's no prerequisite other than those two things. And we will go through the methodology in detail. So next. Um, <clears throat> again, as I mentioned, this covers the Greenbelt training. Uh, it's a combined program and you'll get a balance of both technical skills, methodology skills, project management skills, as well as interactive, you know, interpersonal skills. We'll cover, just as Tracy, we'll cover a good bit of that. Um, the objectives then is to learn the Lean Six Sigma tools at a black belt level. So we go to a much deeper level than we do with the green belt training, right? And again, it's, it's a staged approach. Um, part of what we'll talk through is how do we select projects? This is a very interesting thing. We cover, you'll see in a moment, there is a boatload, literal boatload of tools that we're going to cover. And if you just look at those tools, they are in a disjointed you know, confusing uh, myriad of things. It's an Easter basket full of, you know, eggs. But what we do is we take that and we align those tools within the framework of Demaic, right? Now, the second thing we do is this very interesting anecdote where uh, uh, Einstein was challenged by a journalist with a, with a thought experiment. He says, there's a problem that's facing the world. All life is going to go extinct. It's a solvable problem, but you only have one hour to solve it. How would you spend your time? Einstein said, I would spend 55 minutes understanding the problem and five minutes coming up with a solution. And we tend to do the exact opposite. We kind of halfway look at the problem and start throwing our favorite solutions at it. The old, the more you learn about a hammer, the more everything looks like a nail routine, right? So what we do up front is we spend a lot of time making sure we understand what the problem actually is. And then we select the right tools. Now, as a black belt, right, you're going to be trained on all of these tools. In fact, there's even more tools you'll see on the following slide. We're going to be covering a lot of these things, or in fact, all of these. Um, and what happens, though, is as we look at those tools, we'll align those into a, into a specific format of uh, methodology that will allow us to pick the right sort of problem we're addressing, right? And so we'll look at it and say, okay, are we trying to address a cycle time problem? Are we trying to address an imbalance in a process? Are we trying to address a, a technology limitation? Do we actually have a defect that's occurring? Do we need to find the root cause? All of those problems have root causes, but we'll approach them different ways. And it's almost like saying, you know, what's better, a hole punch or a pair of scissors? That's an impossible question to answer. Depends on what you're trying to do, right? And so when we look at the Lean Sigma methodology, and I know I'm talking fast, for, for a boy from Alabama, I can run through it quick, right? But <clears throat> when, you, when you look at your problem, you have to select the right tools to address that problem. And that's what we're going to equip you to do, right? So if you would, next. Um, <clears throat> uh, again, we're going to cover this over. It's every Friday from 8 to 12 Pacific. And uh, we, it starts on 9:10, and we'll be going four hours in training. The training sessions typically, you know, at uh, 50 to 55 minutes of lecture and a, you know, three to five minute break between each one of those hours, just to kind of give us a quick chance to reset, rethink, and, and go forward. A couple of expectations. On the end, on 2:11, we will do final project presentations. That is, everybody that's attending the class will present their final presentation on their project. Um, also, outside of the class, there's videos you'll watch, there's uh, discussion groups you'll participate in, there's quizzes that help you adjust and, and understanding your, your level of learning going through. There's also some case studies that we'll present that give you a chance to evaluate and look at, especially when we start getting to some of the more advanced tools. And so, again, the in-class stuff, the, the time is rigid, of course, from 8 to 12. The other stuff is open. You can do it anytime during the week at your convenience. Um, next, please. All right. Right, that's a lot, and so that ultimately, is a lot. And yeah, and, so, and I think, yeah, go ahead, Jim. Well, I was going to say, when we talk about project selection, um, the question always comes up: How do I pick a project? And and I was trained. I mean, I'm really going to betray some information here, but I was <laughs> trained as a black belt um, in the last century. 
right? So uh, it sounds really dramatic when you say it like that. It wasn't that long ago, seemingly. But, um, and, and I understood the methodology more or less. I had no idea how to pick projects. And in fact, it wasn't very well explained to us on how to pick a project. It was more or less the assumption was management has this list of projects they want you to go work and you just go pick one out of the hat. It didn't quite work that way, right? So what happens is we'll go through, and there's actually a project selection workbook. I believe Angela's already sent it out, and you'll see that. Um, beware that that is a, it is a, a black belt focused, but it's easily applicable to green belt, right? And it goes through uh, four different main sources of projects, whether it's internally focused issue, it's most, mostly around defects or errors or, or problems you have with the process internally, externally focused with customer experience around the same issues defects, errors, that sort of thing. Um, efficiency, capacity, or cycle time issues, which cover a large range of tools, but it's around, it costs us too much to run this process, or it takes us too long to do this process, or from the time the customer orders it to the time we were able to give them that service and get them signed up, it takes two weeks. I mean, it's 10 minutes worth of work. Why does it take two weeks, right? Or we'll look at other, oftentimes around strategic business objectives. So there's a tool set that helps you do that and helps you qualify projects. What makes sense for this tool set. One thing we want to talk about is the project that we have is fit for purpose for the tool set. So it's not, you know, the tool set here is not how do you go, you know, uh, onboard a new piece of equipment in an office or in a manufacturing plant. I mean, that's a great project, but it's not a demaic project, right? So there's some criteria that help you select that. There's even a couple of tools that are in there, a, a, a business case, for example, or a, a, a prioritization matrix that you'll see. Um, so we do cover those things. And there's some other things here, especially on your first project, try to keep it within your current job scope, right? So the goal is learn to apply these tools in what you're familiar with, at least in terms of your work. As you learn more about the tools, then you begin to see vast opportunities throughout the organization in areas you're not even familiar with, because you begin to switch from a technology skill focus to a process focus. What's going on with the process end to end? So right now, try to keep it within your job scope. We want to make sure it's quantifiable. We can measure it. If you can't measure it, you can't manage it. You can't manage it, can't improve it. You can't improve it, you're at the mercy of chance. You deserve what you get because you never figured out how to measure it. Make sure it's measurable, right? Um, make sure that you have data that you can get. Either the data is readily available or it's easy to collect and we can go get it. Avoid world hunger, right? Avoid boil the ocean. You can't boil the ocean, not at once. You can do it a bucket at a time, but we're trying to keep it a bucket at a time, right? And make sure that we'll talk about scoping. And as Tracy and I work with you on your project, start looking at your, you know, your interim information, we may suggest to you that you broaden your scope, but much more likely that you narrow your scope and make sure you're working on something. We, we like to use the word actionable, something you can do something about within the time frame that we've got. Three months for green belts, five months for black belts. Um, mm -hmm. Next. Yep, good. And so things to think about as you look at your project, right? Is, is there a strategic focus? The more your project is aligned with something that's going on organization-wide, the more likely you are to be successful. Here's what happens. People get excited about starting a project, managers on board, teams on board, everybody's on board. A month and a half later, it starts getting a little more challenging. You gotta collect data, you gotta verify your gauge, you gotta make sure that you can establish what your current capability is, and people just start falling off because they're like, ah, I got 50 other things to do. So the more aligned it is strategically, the more likely you are to be successful over time. Um, make sure that it's something that ties to a measure that's already important, especially around customer expectations. The more, you know, the more associated it is with the customer's experience, the more likely you are to be successful. And when we talk about success, we're talking about long-term commitment because, you know, we're all squirrels, you know, it's like, oh, look over there. Oh, look over there. Right. And, you know, squirrels, they get in the middle of the road. Here comes a car. They're already on the other side of the road. They decide to turn around and run back. I mean, that's our, that's our project selection. So we will make sure we pick something that we stick with and you can get, organizational support throughout the, you know, the life cycle of your project. Um, yeah. And so then there's this areas here, what's painful to you? Where do you have defects? Is there something that takes too long? Again, those are some of the things that you'll see in the project selection workbook. And we'll talk about those in training. Yeah. Um, so there's some uh, uh, project examples. Tracy, I'll let you touch on those real quick. Yeah, we're, um, we're going we're gonna to just briefly cover why UC San Diego first and, and see if we have time. When you say it has to be actional, is that assuming you have the power to implement the change? Yes, Keith, great question. Um, influence over the change, that is correct. So I'm going to tell you one of the red flags I see a lot is 
well, my processes and the work I do is fine, but the people over there, they're messed up and I'm gonna do a project on them. Bad idea. So we always say, focus on your level of your span of influence or control. Yes, you may work with another group. Um, and the hope is that you guys have enough collaboration and trust and a good relationship that they're gonna, you guys are gonna work together to improve the process. But we, we sometimes see that. And I sometimes have to say, I'd say pick another project. It's not your project. Let them work on their processes and you work on your processes. And so that that is also, unfortunately, a barrier because, you know, now you're at their mercy for your project. You're saying this is I need you to implement this in your area. And, you know, now you're stuck. So that's one of the red flags I, I look for. Yes, go ahead, Jim. Can I tag on to that, Tracy? Yes. Um, one thing we talk about, and, and this is actually discussed very briefly in the project selection workbook. Again, Angela is going to circulate that to those who are enrolled in the class is there we talk about structure inside of a project which models if you will the structure inside of an organization we talk about a champion we talk about the belt whether it's green or black and we talk about team members the champion is the one ultimately the the, the criteria for the champion is they have control over the process you're working on right there so you may not have the ability as keith was asking to go and actually change the process itself but that your champion, the manager that's over it, you have to make sure they're buying in, they're on board, and they're actually your champion for the project. They have the ability and they have the authority to go usher in that change. Now, the expectation is that you're going to do it, but with the permission and with the you know, encouragement and support of that process owner, if you will. Part of the thing, uh, I'm sorry, Radia, is that right? Radia. Was mm -hmm. it isn't that right? Right. Radia asked, uh, how do, what about, and that's a common problem. The goal is not to figure out how many plates on a stick you can keep turning, right? That's our projects. We start turning one. I can keep one stick on a plate going pretty good like they do in the circus. You know, do, 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 do. But in a really, really good project administrator can balance 10 sticks on a plate. That's not the goal at all. The goal is you have a champion who sees the problem. They want the belt to work on the champion. They, if you will, hand that problem off to the team to go solve with, his, with that person's support, right? Her support or his support. At the end, when the team is done, they wrap it up nice and neat. They create a control plan. They give it back to the champion. It's the champion's responsibility to manage their processes, right? And so that's a great question, Medea, that we're going to look at how do we take it and take temporary ownership for it, work it through the process, improve it, and give it back to the manager with a solid control plan. Mm -hmm. And the idea yeah. of when we should be at the control phase of the project is when you're ready for your project presentation. What we would ideally what we'd like to see is that you get into control somewhere in mid-January, mid to late January. So you've got a couple of weeks of sustained improvement you can demonstrate in the class mm -hmm. or you yeah. know, in your presentation, I should have said. Good. All right. Uh, let's move into why UC San Diego. So many of you are probably looking at your options right now, uh, different kinds of options. I don't know if you have uh, questions around comparisons of, well, I saw this program and it costs this much and why is that so different? Uh, so I just wanna tell you a little bit about why you should be selecting UC San Diego's program. Uh, so first, if you didn't know this already, I'm going to let you know that there is no official governing body of Lean Six Sigma. So many of you maybe have come from project management and are familiar with PMI, which is the overarching body of project management and training. There's nothing like that for Lean Six Sigma. As a matter of fact, most organizations have done this organically and have created programs that work for them. So manufacturing, Toyota, they didn't go through some governing body to come up with their training program. So I think it's a little bit of a surprise for people to realize there isn't really an official governing body. Now, there are some bodies that want you to believe that they are the governing body, but they are <laughs> not. Um, and so really what you want to think about is what are you trying to get out of this training? Are you trying to get out just a certificate and be done with it? Or are you actually, you know, to, it, it, that's really more, I would say, an academic exercise or do you really wanna learn this stuff and apply it and add value for your organization and build, be a better problem solver? So, and do you wanna get results? So if that is what you're looking for, then this program is what you want to take. It's not an academic exercise. It's not checking the boxes. Guess what? You do work harder, but you get more out of it. I like to say, you know, there's a common, um, a common saying, the grass is always greener, and I like to change the end to where you water it. 
<laughs> right? It's not the grass is always greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. So guess what? In this program, you're watering the grass. You're becoming a better problem solver. So you're taking it on. It's, it's, not, as, it's not the easiest program out there and it's not the quickest program out there, but I believe it's the most effective program out there for learning and being a better problem solver. Radia says sold. So I'm gonna stop talking now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let me so, add one more thing, Tracy. Yes. Um, you, if you're going to go through all this, you might as well have fun. And so people learn better in a fun environment. They learn better when they're when they're relaxed and they're encouraged and they're actually working on something that's relevant to them as opposed to working on some case study in NASA that you don't understand, right? And so yes. you're working on your real project. And Tracy and I, I mean, we might as well have fun and we do have fun. And you can learn a lot having fun and you can make a lot of impact having fun. So you we can do tell have fun. Yeah, and, and not and, and, not casual flipping at all, but you know, serious but fun, might as well. Yeah, exactly. We we I we really believe that and, and Angela Miller is the program manager and she she believes and gets that as well. And oh, by the way, the University of California, San Diego has been rated the top public national, top, top public university uh, many times over for the one, uh, the number one public college in rankings in the last 10 years. They even beat Yale and Harvard, believe it or not. I don't know if you if you know that, but I just wanted to share that. That's not me. That's that's actually in writing. So um, they are a very uh, very um, reputable organization for UC San Diego. Getting your certificate from UC San Diego that's a big deal. And so just keep that in mind as well. And oh, by the way, um, this was actually a question. Well, how does this help our careers? Well, here you go. It pays to have a belt, right? So this is again, not my data. This is from indeed.com. And they have looked at uh, what, what is getting paid, what these green belts, black belts, master black belts are getting paid. And guess what? There's more and more job postings out there that are expressing a desire for this knowledge or that they say they want some level of belt training and certification is preferred. I have had people in my class say, I'm here because every job I looked at said they wanted a belt training. So I don't even know what a belt is, but I'm here. <laughs> so it does pay to have a belt. So it does help you with your career. This is one of those, to me, this is the kind of knowledge that will never become obsolete. You can change jobs, you can change careers, you can change industries. You will still use what you learn in this class in your daily job, because if you work in a process, you're going to need to improve that process at some point, regardless of what that process is. So you don't have to worry about Microsoft Office 365 in five years from now, and you're going to be obsolete and you have to take it all over again, unless, of course, you don't use it, which we want you to use it too. <laughs> Okay, we're coming up on the tail end. So if you have additional questions, please um, definitely put them in the chat window. There's a big jump from black belt to master black belt. Is it the number of projects? You know, actually it's um, master black belts are considered uh, strategic and often have a direct line to the president of the organization. So it's really more that you are not only um, you're, you're sort of coordinating the entire effort at an organization as a master black belt. So that's a lot. It's usually uh, an operational excellence um, position. You're working with executives to make sure there's strategic alignment with what operational excellence or process improvement are doing. And you're making sure that you're sort of uh, the person that's sort of coordinating all of the effort in an organization. So yes, it's... Um, you, you typically have a number of black belts reporting to you and you're not only working with them, but you're also managing and helping uh, the organization build their culture. And that's a big, that's a big job. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am going to hand it over now. We've got about 10 minutes left. I'm gonna hand it over to Angela to talk about the registration process. And I'm gonna look at the chat window to see if anybody has additional questions. Excuse me. Thanks, Tracy. Um, so as I mentioned before, I'm here to help with any administrative and administrative questions that includes, of course, the registration process. I do want to add on to uh, Tracy's mention about why UCSD. Um, I think one 
big important aspect is uh, the networking opportunities. Yes, we are in a virtual environment, but there are so many opportunities to still stay together, to connect with past alumni, to connect with our amazing advisory board. When we can, we get together and host an annual uh, mixer. That's a lot of fun. We rent out a brewery here in San Diego. And so you'll have an opportunity to connect with uh, past Green and Black Belt alumni. And uh, we host a, a yearly conference on the campus, uh, Process Palooza, which is a lot of fun. Uh, and so again, so many reasons to come together and collaborate with folks outside of the immediate class. As far as the registration process, we've noted them here. Um, you can reach out to me if you have any questions. One question that always comes up is about the payment plan. If you would like to register, there's an option to request a no interest payment plan and that effectively breaks up the tuition into monthly portions prior to the class's completion. Um, and if you want to join the Black Belt, I do like to have an additional conversation with you just to make sure that you are um, aware of the project, <clears throat> excuse me, component. Having attended today, I feel confident that you know uh, what that entails, but feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Um, any administrative questions that I can help to answer right now? You can put it in the chat or you're welcome to come off off uh, off of mute. Mm -hmm. Or any questions in general about the yeah. program, anything about payment, any any questions about registration. Someone said, if I cannot attend the session, when is the next session? Well, sure. I can tell you right now as an instructor that Angela has booked me out till 2022 of July already. So there are it's lots true. of lots of classes that you can attend, uh, you can, you can choose from. And, you know, honestly, um, this program is very, very popular and successful. The reason why we have four green belt options is because we actually are filling these four classes. We used to have six years ago, only one green belt class per semester. And now we have four per semester. Uh, sure. so it's very, very popular and a lot of demand. People are getting a lot of value out of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Radia asked about the live sessions being recorded. To my understanding, we, we do not record um, the live training sessions. We, will, we really want you to be there because it is engaging and interactive. You're also going to be collaborating with fellow students in the class. Um, if you need to miss uh, one to two sessions, um, then you can work with the instructors. Not for the green belt, I believe we might you have an option maybe to miss one the black belt, potentially up to two uh, live sessions, but that's something that you would collaborate with the instructor. And of course there's outside work involved, um, but we really want you to be there uh, if you're gonna take a live online to be sure and engage and collaborate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And some of the reason why we don't record is because people are talking about their projects and some people have, uh, you know, they're not comfortable sharing it. We don't share those recordings um, anyway, but um, uh, so that's one of the reasons why we don't record because it is live application and there's some, uh, sometimes some issues with that and we wanna respect that. One other mention I, I wanna bring up behind me, you'll see um, I have a background uh, talking about the scholarship that we offer at UC San Diego. Um, I think one or two folks on the call might be with UC San Diego, but just so you know, um, we offer a, a yearly scholarship um, hosted by our leaders on campus. And they, each year for the past five years, they have put at least 20 staff members through the Green Belt uh, or Black Belt program. So the scholarship is actually running until, um, it was just extended, I just got a note, until 8.15. And so that is this Sunday. So if you have any questions about applying to the scholarship, um, you're welcome to do so. You do have to submit um, information for a potential project that you'd like to work on and get supervisor support. The other thing to mention, if, if you or your company wants to set up a scholarship, it is a wonderful way to uh, get staff members excited, involved. Um, that's one of the reasons we have this yearly conference, Process Palooza on campus. Um, and so if you would like to set up a scholarship at your company, you're welcome to reach out to me and I can kind of walk you through what I've learned um, by, by doing that, so. Um, Wonderful. Okay, we, I'm not seeing any additional questions come through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close the session five minutes early because what I'm finding is even 
introverts don't want to talk when everybody's here. They'd rather just wait until the end and then ask the question. So guess what? We reserved the last five minutes for introverted people because we respect you and we, and, and we want you to be able to ask the question and not have to wait on the line. So yeah, and I'll stop recording no one, right now. Yeah. So if no one has any additional questions, thank you so much for joining us. We hope we see you in the future. Really looking forward to it. Um, and thank you for coming today.